Well, that's one. <laughs> so, it's funny what goes through your mind when you're playing music. One thing that went through my mind was, this is one of the few activities in life where you're truly in the moment, in the present. And it's a wonderful feeling. Of course, you have to kind of be ready for what's coming around the corner. Uh, otherwise, you get caught off guard, taken by surprise. But the other side of it is, when something didn't go exactly right, I thought about it for an instant and then said to myself, well, that's that, that's history. <laughs> and then you go on and, and you try to play a few nice notes and, and put it out of your mind and live in that moment. So, I mean, honestly, I think that's often what we're, we're looking for in life is, is people talk about being in the present and mindful. And, uh, uh, I've learned that Worrying about the future is fairly pointless, and, and also looking back with regret is also fairly useless. And, and, uh, and so here we are right now, uh, May 23rd at 5.59, and, uh, and honestly, I mean, what a, what a privilege it is to be uh, sharing these pieces with you. And, and to be able to have these pieces for cello that uh, Bach gave us. I mean, he was not a cellist. No one asked him to write these things. He just got it in his head. Well, what if I, I try to do something like this? No one had ever done anything like it before. And I don't think anyone has, has equaled it since. And, and so here we are. Getting to kind of reap the rewards, and as a cellist, it makes me feel really grateful. Um, so the third suite is in C major, the lowest string on the cello. C major is often described as being a muscular key. Uh, Mozart's Jupiter Symphony is in C major. It's powerful and incredibly uh, uh, uplifting and has maybe a different affect than G major. Also, it, 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 it's a wonderful key for the cello and, and for cellists too, because it's kind of uh, natural for the instrument. It utilizes a lot of the natural overtones and sonorities of the instrument, and it sort of, uh, we, we say it lies well in the hand, um, so that the things that are awkward and challenging, of course, because Bach uh, tried all kinds of things in these suites, but uh, a lot of it feels natural to play. Uh, his suite two starts with a prelude, and then an album, and then a courant, and then the slow movement, the serban. Instead of two minuets, this one has two bourrées. The first one is very famous piece by Bach that little Suzuki violinists play from the time they start playing fiddle and, and uh, the second worry is in C minor, just as the second minuet in the first suite was in G minor, the only movement of the suite that's not in G major it was in G minor, and the second worry is in C minor, so it has a really different character. But of course, after you play that one, you go back and you play the first one again, which is in the major, so you have a happy ending. Um, and, and then the G, which is a very playful piece and, and uh, full of some surprise, jarring dissonances that always make me laugh, especially when I think that, that some of Bach's songs who were composers themselves would talk about the old man as being hopelessly uh, old-fashioned and stuffy. And then you play these dissonances in the G. It's like, huh, I don't know if they ever heard this piece, you know. <laughs> but of course they had to think that because they were trying to be composers.
to send their dad to see what wants a bachelor lock. I mean, what a situation. Um, and they turned out to be wonderful composers and, and developed what became the classical style. Um, so it was necessary for them to kind of rebel and reject something about what their father had accomplished in a certain sense. The only other thing I would say is a lot of the Western music modulates from one key into the other, or different movements of sonatas or symphonies are in different keys. This is a whole suite that's all in C major, with the exception of the second Blu-ray. So that could be monotonous. And Pablo Casals famously said, the worst enemy of music is monotony. So what can you do to keep from being uh, bored yourself or, or being tiresome and uninteresting for the audience? I think the answer is to find the real character of each movement and make it alive. And then the movements are incredibly varied, as they were in the first suite. I mean, uh, even though they were all in G major, the movements are all uh, very different than one another, 